Hi everyone, uh, welcome uh, to week 12. So this week we'll um, cover social movements. Um, so I'll start immediately because um, I pro probably uh, will be short of time. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So basically today we are going to cover um, three things. And the very first one is going to be what is social movement. And the um, second one that we'll cover is um, what does account for um, the increasing power than effect of social moments and then we'll cover a little um, the advantages and disadvantages uh, of social moments so uh, basically let's start with uh, the definition of the uh, social moment what is a social moment it is an informal group of people engaged in um, political activity this is the simplistic way um, to um, define uh, social moments so in an informal collective movement of people loosely coordinated uh, in their actions and using flexible tactics. So um, loose organizations and then uh, flexibility in its tactics um, are very important advantages, but, but of course they can be also disadvantages. So we'll come to that. So with some sort of leadership um, to um, kind of like to give the actions come some kind of coherence. So we'll also focus on that one um, as well. So a, so a social movement always has a purpose or direction. So this is very important to differentiate social movements from other moments um, this is quite important so there has to be a purpose and also a direction and um, and also some sort of leadership is also necessary to focus on the efforts of um, the social uh, moment the group so uh, basically what is the difference between social moments and political parties and interest groups so uh, political parties uh, want to come into government and interest groups want to affect um, the policy and social moments can do both of them so this is very important. But the main difference is they are much loosely and less organized compared to political parties and interest groups. So they are much less institutionalized. So this is very important. Lack of organization is the one that actually differentiates um, the social movements uh, from political parties and uh, interest groups. So they depend very much on rapid communication among members of the group. So spontaneity um, is a very important aspect of uh, social moments, that the power of the social moments. And social moments are also better at, um, you know, um, disrupting an existing order rather than um, building a new structure instead of it. So this is also another important um, characteristic that we can think about. So uh, you probably need to know also the word grassroots, which is uh, from bottom. So um, basically the whole organization of um, social movements, quite contrary to interest groups and political parties. And of course, there are some exceptions in political parties, especially mass parties. But um, in general, social movements are movements coming from the base, uh, from the grassroots. This is also um, quite important um, um, characteristic or feature of uh, social movements. So what are the examples? So there are so many historical examples. So you can go all the back to um, the um, British history and um, for instance the organization of the um, average people uh, in Britain against the king and how they actually got the power from the king and uh, from the first parliament. Uh, in modern history. That's actually quite a good example of the social movements. So another important example is after the First World War, um, during the um, uh, the transition in Germany, um, the Jewish uh, foreign minister got assassinated and more than one million um, uh, German people got out of the street in Berlin. Uh, that's also another example of um, social moves as spontaneity. Another one is the independence of India uh, from the British Empire um, uh, organized by Mahatma Gandhi and um, his disobedience, um, and the, the civil disobedience movement um, is a very good example. And the counterpart of it is of course um, kind of civil rights movement um, uh, happened in the US. Uh, Martin Luther King's boycotting at uh, the Montgomery, Alabama busing system so this is also a quite important example. So I always give example of the Arab uprisings of 2010-11. They are also very recent examples of social movements. And of course, we can always discuss about the successes and um, unsuccessful um, um, uh, part of the um, Arab uprisings always. And very recently, I think uh, we can always think about um, um, the Tea Party movement 
and also Occupy Wall Street. And nowadays, uh, Black Lives Matter and on the counterpart, the Blue Lives Matter. We can always discuss whether Blue Lives Matter qualify as a social movement or not. So, um, basically, we are talking about informal moments and they are spawned by contentious politics. So, we are talking about confrontations between ordinary people and the political or economic elite. So, this is also quite important um, uh, thing that you need to know about social movements. So why now, right? This is also quite important. How social movements get so powerful over time? But of course, historically, they were already powerful. So think about, for example, the French movement, right? The, the French Revolution. The French Revolution probably wouldn't be possible um, vi vi without the um, printing, the invention of printing, the effect of, for instance, more and more people have access to reading uh, materials on like other than the Bible. Um, uh, that's also a very, very important um, thing um, um, that affected especially the communication, the pace of communication, the, um, the magnitude of communication at that time, even in um, 18th century uh, in France. But of course, since we are talking about the effect of the rapid communication, I think um, the internet and the, um, the age of technology and the information um, I think it's very important how social media is uh, playing a role and play their role actually um, during the Arab uprisings. So then actually the Egyptian um, government at that time by, um, led by uh, Husn Mubarak, they had to stop. Um, the, um, the, they closed down the all cell phone and internet services at that time so that they thought that they can stop people to get organized. So um, other possibilities um, that can actually affect or account for the increasing um, effect and power of social moments. The first one might be the um, they are um, kind of the rise of post-material um, political issues such as environment, such as uh, women's rights, um, ethnic relations. Um, I think I think you can also call it the emergence of identity politics is one aspect of it. So another one is um, they also may be the um, the general decline of the centrality uh, centrality of the um, political parties. So we kind of discussed about it, um, the decline of the membership uh, in political parties. Um, so they are getting quite um, uh, old um, uh, organizations and people uh, stop believing and trusting in those um, organizations. That's why I think um, that could be also explained by the volatility, um, the voting shifts. Um, between political parties, more people, for instance, start to vote for new political parties in European countries. Of course, um, we can um, discuss about this in the US, um, since now we have um, different um, fractions within the Republican Party, maybe less so in the Republican Party, especially in Democrats. I think right after the, um, um, the official um, announcement of um, the president-elect um, Joe Biden, I think the, um, the discussion just started uh, in the Democratic Party between um, moderates and um, the um, progressives. So we can definitely talk about those as well um, tomorrow. But there are more specific, more general explanations for that. So how does a social movement um, be successful in a given uh, political system? If you ask that question, I think there are three answers for that. The first one is called political opportunity structures. So basically, when you look at the political system, there are aspects of the um, broader political system um, that may offer a social moment advantages. And um, they might be, you know, um, the partnership. So the presence of potential allies um, in the government or opposition. That's quite important. Another one is um, international organizations that are sympathetic with the social moment. They can't always put pressure on uh, the domestic government uh, in um, those countries of uh, those social movements. Another one is the breakdown of the confidence uh, in government or in leadership. It's the legitimacy, right? So these are um, kind of um, aspects of the general political system and called uh, uh, political opportunity structures. The second one is um, mobilizing structures. So um, various characteristics of the movement itself may account for the success or lack of success. So for instance, there are so many movements in the Latin America, um, especially indigenous people's movement, but not all of them are successful. The most successful example I think is um, the 
um, Zapatista movement in Chiapas in Mexico. I think this is uh, quite important because they are, it's a very adaptive movement. So they kind of adapted to um, the new um, things happening, especially in terms of the use of internet, for example. They are extremely good in terms of, um, you know, affecting um, uh, the, 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 the using actually the new communication um, to put their message out there and they are very successful successful in that and finally there is also a framing aspect so how do you frame um, your you know the, the the main problem that you are uh, working on right so um, framing basically is like how issues are presented right so in order to form a social movement a group must both feel a grievance and how are you going to put your message out there is going to um, affect your success or um, lack of success so um, then um, I think we can also um, talk about advantages and disadvantages of um, the uh, social movements. So basically, I already told you that social movements are different from um, political parties and interest groups, especially in terms of their loose organizations. But at the same time, their main advantage is they can actually act like political parties and interest groups when it comes to their purpose. They can actually um, try to change the government or affect the government, but at the same time, they just want, uh, you know, focus on one policy. So that's, that's flexibility is a very important advantage for um, them. So we'll come to advantages, but let's start with first with the disadvantages. So first of all, it's difficult for them to amass uh, many of the resources. So uh, basically, when you think about political parties and interest groups, the, the resources are not necessarily a problem, especially in a pluralist, pluralist system like in the US, right? So we already talked a lot about how the campaign um, financing is an important resource for um, the elections and how money plays a role um, in the mainstream politics in the US right now. So pol uh, social movements not necessarily um, have or, um, you know, uh, Based their resources on the, those kind of things, so um, social movements are um, kind of um, having having this disadvantage of lacking those um, high resources that we can account for in political parties and interest groups, and also they are better at bringing problems um, to the war or ousting officials than at the slow work of designing policy because of that. So, um, so I think that that time frame is very important, right? So they are much more short living. Um, organizations compared to political parties and interest groups. So because social movements, the second disadvantage is because social movements um, usually um, are ephemeral. So counting their organization's lives, not necessarily in decades, but in months or years at most. So policymakers often know that they can outlast them. So it's not like um, a church. It's not like a trade union or labor union. So social movements are um, uh, their their endurance is lower compared to those organizations, so that's another disadvantage. But there are advantages um, that um, for for social movements. The first one is actually um, because they they do not have an entrenched staff uh, or old established members to whom they must defer. Um, they can be very nimble. Um, so this is a very important um, advantage in defining and framing um, their issues. The flexibility, right? They can shift quickly. Yeah, if tactical necessities um, arises. This is a very important advantage. A second advantage is social movements have the great ability to form networks um, beyond the boundaries of the state. So basically they can always um, um, have solidarity with other social movements um, 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 in other countries. So they can become very international. For, you can always think about how other countries, um, I think it happened a lot in Germany, um, people actually go out and protest against the police violence um, in U.S., right? This is quite interesting to think about. And third, because they are nimble and because communication and the flow of information are so important um, in their mobilization, so social movements are often adept at communication and at using information effectively. Again, the Zapatista movement is a very good example to that. So we'll uh, also talk about those uh, tomorrow. So these are the things that I want to cover for today. Um, tomorrow we can probably talk more about examples and other stuff. So thanks for listening and I'm looking forward to seeing you all um, tomorrow during our um, uh, synchronous meeting. Have a nice day.